Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is enjoying Kernel Recipes this year. You give a round of applause for Velu and Anne for doing such a great job organizing this. I honestly believe that most people have no idea what it's like to organize an event of this scale. Like, like imagine calling restaurants like endlessly. I need to feed 50 people in the middle of the summer vacation season in the center of Paris. Can you do that? And most of them are going to say, no, you're crazy, or it's going to be too expensive. So um, I'm hoping there will be some lively discussion after this. So my talk isn't very long. It's just I have a very specific points I want to make. And then let's see where that goes. So we don't live forever. So what does that really mean? So basically. The point is that you're engrossed in your technical activities all day and what warnings GCC is spitting out for you that are making you not being able to get your work done. So you don't think about like long-term real life issues like mortality and the in inevitability of death. But honestly, as a maintainer, this is one of your key responsibilities, I believe, as a maintainer of some important piece of infrastructure in the technical world that you have to be prepared for what happens after you. So. What happened to me? So in October of 2019, I suffered a right MCA stroke. So it happened here, so it affected the left side of my body. I just fell to the floor, and I could not get back up. And I was just vomiting like crazy. It was really crazy. I was super scared. I knew something was wrong, but thanks to my fiance, I got to the hospital in time for treatment, and my cat was very concerned too. Actually, the cat found me first. And she's like, meow, 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 are you okay? And there she is. Her name is Affogato. She's waiting for me back home. I miss her very much. So here's the thing. Maintainership is a finite thing, whether due to your health or due to the political situation of a project, you could be replaced at some time, and you have to account for this before it's too late. So unfortunately, most maintainers have a very controlling tendency in their personality, and that's just like how they ensure the quality of the thing that they're maintaining. But you have to let go of this if you want your project to uh, to do well after you. You have to share responsibilities now. You have to be able to delegate. Also, if you delegate while you're still alive and still maintaining the project, you will get some breathing room and you'll have more time to do other things that you might want to do besides just being a patch monkey all day. You have to learn to trust people and let them help you and not be so tied up in your controlling aspects of how you want to do things. This is it's not a simple solution. There's no simple solution just because maintainers don't grow on trees. It takes a very specific type of individual. You have to have the technical capability, the knowledge, the context, and you also have to know the background stories and all the different elements of what you maintain. So for example, you need to understand the politics of why some company is doing some things in the background. That's why they're doing things in their driver. And you have to understand those interactions in order to make the correct decisions as a maintainer. You also have to be trusting. People have to trust you. And that's not something you can just make happen, like learning how to, t how t having a technical skill. Um, so you have to kind of groom maintainers into this role. It doesn't just happen overnight. So raise your hand if you're a maintainer of something right now. OK, of those people, raise your hand if you delegate to other people to help you maintain that thing. Well, that's good. There's some people are like on the right train already. Raise your hand if you're th you have people helping you and you have you would be okay with them taking over the project should you cease to be able to. That's good. So it looks like a lot of you are like on the right track already. Actually, I I was worried that like very few hands would go up for the second and third one, and I have to like you know berate people like you sh because if you're not dealing with it now, by the time it matters, it's way too late. I also think that a lot of people have no clear idea about what maintainers actually do and why we're so grumpy all the time and why we're so overworked and tired. It's because we have to deal with things like like the man page requirements, API changes, people are going to be mad about it. So just think about all the things that a maintainer has to consider when they look at a change get submitted. And you just I just do this all day long. And so Helping, getting people delegating and help, helping me out with that is, is really helps me a lot need to get my work done to be more sane. Like I said, plan it now before it's too late. And a goal without a plan is just a wish. So think about this now if you haven't already. And make sure that your project will be still relevant and well maintained after 
you are no longer able to. Because I mean, wouldn't you be upset to think that, wow, some random person is going to take over my project and maybe take it in a direction that I don't agree with or I would never be okay with, or like, or maybe there wouldn't be anyone willing to stand up and become the maintainer. So that's a very important thing to consider. So another thing that about the fact that maintainers don't grow on trees is that often there are people who have the time and the willingness but just aren't don't have the skill set or the ability or the trust of the community so having all these elements at the same time is like rare it's a rare breed so maintainers are really special people we should treat them well so and be really kind to them so next time you see a maintainer actually thank them because it'll make them feel a lot better about all the hard work they put into the project so find people you trust and delegate to them that way you can make your project last longer than you which i think is a very powerful concept all right, thank you very much. I really enjoyed expressing this a very important idea that I've been thinking about ever since I had my stroke and I had my woke moment. Thank you very much. Any questions? Can you talk a little bit about um, your process? I mean, you've you've been networking maintainer for I don't know, so you know, since forever, in the order of decades. Yeah, and these days, you know, I see Jakub doing a lot of work. I see other people too. What what was that process like for you to get to where you are now? So, let, a, a little bit of background. So, up until about the year that I had my stroke, I basically did things all on my own. I would just take care of everything. While at the same time, maintaining all the major mailing lists. So it's just, I was pretty overwhelmed. And I think other people noticed this too. In fact, Alexi did. And I went to speak in person with Alexi about like deciding on having someone co-maintain and networking with me. And honestly, if I remember accurately, the result of that discussion was Jakob is not only the best choice, he is the only choice right now. So he had the, the rare combination of domain knowledge, technical skill, availability, and knowledge of the back down, background politics involved in all the code changes. So right now, basically, Jakob and me split things up. I'm in the British time zone because I live in London now, and he's in San Francisco, so he's in the US Western time zone. So basically, we have around the clock coverage from morning in Europe till the evening in the Western United States, so it's cool. There won't be a moment where there won't be someone watching the mailing list or patchwork to uh, apply your changes, and that's, I think that's a great thing for the Linux networking. Right now, we also brought on Paolo Abeni. He's in Italy, so he can take off on the uh, European time zone when I'm not available, like this week. And if you're, you've been watching the networking mailing list these last two weeks, it's been completely transparent even though I'm not doing any work every day. So I, in that sense, I think it's a big success. What's my day look like? So basically I wake up, I eat breakfast, I drink that first important coffee, and then I just, I read, I bring my email in, but honestly these days I can delete most of my emails because patchwork and lore contain all the information I need to apply individual patches or a patch series, which is great. So I think our tooling has improved to the point where like the mailing list is almost unnecessary. It just happens to be the, the catch point where all the information is initially stored, which I think is cool. So honestly, having three co-maintainers, it's really great. I would be more than happy to pass on the networking to Jakob at this point because I trust his judgment. I trust, I mean, he's proven himself as a good co-maintainer. And I think we've gone through the process at this point and I'm really happy with the situation. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Jens is stronger than me. <laughs> You're aiming at me, I understand. It's all good. Um, there is one point that I think that many people forget when they are looking for a container, which is that uh, this person must be recognized by the community as well. And uh, that's something which is not always easy because you can trust another person, uh, recognize their skill, etc. But if this person is not known by the community or not respected similarly, it's not easy. 
And uh, in order to overcome this, uh, I had already uh, some other people re release instead of me, uh, pretending uh, I was not available or whatever, uh, just to uh, make sure that uh, this person would not be would not appear as coming from nowhere uh, in case a problem happens. Yeah, that's uh, really important because one thing I th I thought about when I was choosing co-maintainers was, what if this person pushes back on a change and there's a conflict, a discussion, like what will happen? Will their decision be respected or will they come to me and say, David, Jakob rejected my change, please put it in because I respect you and I know you'll make a better decision. Mm -hmm. And that's a, definitely a part of the criteria of choosing people. Oh, and th another thing I was thinking about is if we have this n obvious need for maintainership handover at some point when someone becomes incapacitated, maybe we need like wills or some kind of like legal, legal mechanism to ensure that things are passed along cleanly and in the way the maintainer had intended because what if the community decides, oh, who cares what Dave was thinking or what he wanted, we're just going to do things our own way and assign this other person. I don't want that to happen. So, But at the same time, I trust the community to follow my wishes at this point because I am recognized and respected in the community, obviously. Um, so the problem is pretty similar to when we discussed a few years ago how to uh, avoid that maintainers are being burned out and uh, co-maintaining and uh, group maintaining was also back then considered a solution but it's really difficult for some subsystems I think so back then my subsystem I2C was described as a flyby subsystem so developers come drop their driver and go because it's, it's not like as relevant as uh, networking for example and so one thing I did to somehow cope with all the patches is uh, to say that I'm only maintaining the core and I want individual driver maintainers. Mm -hmm. That works good for some drivers, not so good for other drivers, but at least it took a bit of pressure for me, uh, of me. But the hope that someone very active from the driver maintainers would be a candidate for taking over the I2C SIP system. So, so for that's a pity that didn't work out at all. That's an interesting idea because you know sometimes the driver author will do a lot of changes in the core to facilitate their driver at APIs or whatnot. So that could happen. I also want to mention that this is actually how the wireless people have two maintainers: one for the core of Mac 802.11 and one for the individual drivers. And that seems to work out quite well to distribute the, the load amongst two people. But they have to interact with, these have to be two people who work together very well because th there's going to be like interactions between and conflicts between the two subsystems, parts of the subsystem, yes. So that's a good point. Thank you. Be alert. <laughs> The box is flying. So there's also a sort of uh, long-term thing have of thinking ahead of. Oh shit! Sorry, I'll move. Of, of sort of thinking ahead of who will be the maintainer five, ten years down the line, and and sort of grooming, as you say, or, or building these talents now, and and sort of welcoming new people. So like, you don't have one person who is like the only choice so what if that person says no right right and sort of and, and i think this is sort of any person in a leadership position needs to be thinking about mm -hmm. what is what happens when i'm gone and how do we how do we prevent the um the community from being without that because other either things will fall apart or you will get like infighting or someone like a fork, this is related to another pattern that I see that's developing and it's very concerning for Linux as a whole project is look at this room, we're not getting any younger. I don't see a lot of new new faces in the crowd these days. So it's like usually the same people getting old and we're not getting any younger, obviously. So like encourage new people to get involved in the project, especially if they show like they're already interested at a high level. So that's important to keep the cycle of people coming. That's the only way we'll find new maintainers is to get new yeah. people. Without new people, we don't have new possible maintainers. Yeah, point. I, things like the Linux Foundation mentoring process uh, project, I have some great experience with that. It's like si sign up as a mentor and bring in new people. They're That's great. good, thank you. 
On the grooming side, there is one thing. It's not, we don't have just two levels of developer and then maintainer. The maintainer's file actually has like trusted reviewer section. So that's one in the, kind of one step in between and one thing that I've used to just, it, and it just recognizes people that are doing significant contributions, recognize them as. And even uh, outside of the maintainer's file, I think this is recognized yeah. informally by most maintainers. They know yes. who, the, who the high quality reviewers are. But, f but I think formalizing that is, is helpful to just recognize those people publicly and mm -hmm. they might and people decide. Would give, that would give people a good incentive to continue doing exactly, what they do. Yeah. That's good. I, that's a good idea. Thank you. You weren't here for my talk and you're going to ask questions? Actually, Seriously? <laughs> I forgot to play at my hotel. I don't run back. You didn't even and make it to my early. selfie. You didn't make it into my crowd selfie pic. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, actually from a comment you said, I have a question here to this audience, which is, um, who here is in their 20s? <laughs> who uh, here is in their 30s? 40s? 50s? I, I won't go 60. <laughs> but, but the thing is, there's a, there's a curve here there that I don't really believe that. I just think that the people that are most visible are, are old, the other established, well-known people. Because I care to you, if I were to die, there'd be like four or five people that could, would fill the void. That's, that's my belief, but at least that's my hope. I'm glad you're so optimistic about the situation. Great. But wouldn't you like to have at least some level of influence on how things go? I see, cool. Oh, just to comment on bringing in new people, it's something that, that at least I've tried hard to do. And I think the, um, the past toxicity of Linux kernel development was very detrimental to bringing in new people. I mean, who wants to join a project? People yell at you, right? Nobody wants to do that. So I think we're in, we're in better shape there now than definitely. we were. We definitely still have work to do. Um, the appropriate people have received their therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much that helped, but other people too, right? But I, I think it's definitely better than it was, and I hope that we can kind of shed some of this reputation going down the line as it's warranted, I think. I agree. So to uh, appreciate the work all the reviewers done, I updated my git request pull script so that it would not only include the people who have authored the patch, but also everyone who has reviewed or tested the patch. That's a good idea. So um, I have that list in the pull request as well. I have a snippet git repository on kernel.org for everyone who's interested. I tried to upstream it to Git, and they thought it was a nice idea, but they wanted, instead of my little hackish script, they wanted to invent a new mechanism and that was way beyond what I was, I was, but yeah, so maybe take this script or take write your own, but I think it's worth to also appreciate the reviewers and testers. Anytime you can recognize com contributors in that way, it's a good idea. It's a tad off topic, but um, as a non-maintainer uh, and as a um, very tiny contributor, um, the one thing that you never talk about is the tribute that uh, maintainership and uh, the Linux takes on your life and all the, the sacrifices that you make all, all day long. And that would, know, would help uh, everyone to put in perspective what's happening to you mm -hmm. and why sometimes you're just the, you know, the drop in the, in the, in the pool mm -hmm. that makes it uh, all go out. And I think empathy, uh, when it comes to relations, especially in an open source project, is something cr crucial. And uh, you should talk about it. And I, I think talk about it. There are two points to make on this. First of all, you're absolutely correct. And everyone sees and celebrates the success, but no one looks at the hard work and sacrifices that were made to get there. So someone should talk, talk about it openly. I know it's uh, personal. Another thing that happens is once I hand over responsibilities to a co-maintainer, they immediately say to me, I had no idea all the stuff that you do. I have so much more res respect for what you're up to. Thank you very much. So it's very eye-opening for people to try to help maintain something, especially on the scale of the Linux networking. Uh, hey, um, I came in with, this is more of an experience that I had, I came in uh, to kernel development with about, let's say, five people. I, they were uh, the same age as me, which I consider to be very, very good. And of those, one is left. 
I mean, which is me. And the other ones just quit because they were like, fuck this, I can deal with this. Um, I think, I guess things have changed by now, but we, I agree, we still have a long way to go. And the question I have is, um, it's really good to see that we have done succession planning for networking. Is this something that is a general topic that, for example, is discussed at the maintainer summit? You know, where other subsystems are encouraged? We should. That is definitely something that should be discussed, and I'll make sure that the topic is brought up at least. So thanks for bringing that up. Thank you. Um, so as you said, in the mainta maintainership world, it's important to know, to be knowledgeable about uh, domain politics and uh, having community trust. For, or as young kernel developers, how is it possible to learn about that, to be knowledgeable? enough about main politics and to gain community trust. I think there are a lot of opportunities for people to get recognized, like you can submit talks to Kernel Recipes or LPC or whatever conference is convenient for you and seems to cover your area of expertise and your interests. And over time, people will recognize the people who have a lot of ambition and skill and really enjoy working on a particular piece of code or a piece of technology. So it'll show that you're interested and you really are driven to do the right thing. So it's pretty easy to re recognize people who are like this. So just go and expose yourself to the community and it'll happen over time if your feelings are genuine. Thank you. So on, on the question of politics, <laughs> um, a, lot, a lot of the sort of behind the scenes politics is obviously behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to make this more transparent and visible? I know people are a bit Fudgy about this and that'd be very desirable, but a lot of things are happening behind closed doors because it's like secrets that companies have or things that you really can't discuss publicly. So yeah, but we push back on vendors for all kinds of things. Why can't we push back on this? Right. If we can push back on PR control, we can push back on this for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. I agree. Thank you, Richard Gooch. His ears are probably itching right now, wherever he may be. And, well, one thing I always bring also up in these discussions, I mean, maintainers need a special skill set and they usually sacrifice something and still a lot of maintainers I know do their work in their free time or as a side project. They, they make their real money with other jobs, kernel related or not. And uh, I think, uh, it's difficult, I know, but I, I, I think if we found a way to actually pay maintainers for their work, that would also help the situation a lot. I agree, because that's one of the major sacrifices some maintainers make. Like, they don't put as much time into their paid work as they do into their maintainership role, because obviously it's more fun to work on a Linux kernel than whatever your paid work is. So yeah, that's a good point. Maybe someone at the Linux Foundation can find a way to fund paying maintainers in some, some formal or informal way. Thanks for the idea. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. You've been a great audience. Great. David, David, I have a question for you. Um, uh, don't worry, it's not a wedding proposal. <laughs> um, you know, it's a 10th edition next year, and we would like you to think about being uh, the godfather for this 10th edition. I would be more than happy to, it's a privilege. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.